Hey guys, so today I'll be taking a look at the Duke Thomas action figure by Mattel and it is part of their DC Multiverse line and this particular figure is part of their Collect and Connect rookie action figure line and that is that huge robot that Commissioner Jim Gordon used during his time as Batman. I'll, review, I'll be reviewing that action figure later this week um, but first I'll be running through and reviewing all of these figures included in this wave. Uh, so be sure to check the channel and check the rest of the figures out. But for today, I'll be taking a look at Duke Thomas. First, let's take a look at his box. Uh, let's take a look at the front of the box, and that is pretty standard for the DC Multiverse line. Same red box, uh, DC logo up front, character information on the side, a uh, little, uh, little drawing of from the comic books of the character on the front as well, window panel, side, another comic book illustrated version of him, back shows off what characters come in this wave, the collect and connect figure pieces and the figure itself and what figure you need to collect to get the figure. Um, and the back, side, side, all pretty standard. Um, that's about it. Let's take a look at the action figure itself, guys. All right, so this is Duke Thomas outside of the packaging and uh, thoughts right away is that I really like the um, the way this figure is designed and kind of painted. Everything looks super neat and this looks like to me a new body sculpt, a completely fresh body sculpt. It's not one of those reused, recycled re uh, DC Universe Classics bodies that DC Multiverse line is now just simply reusing, repainting, adding on a new head sculpt or whatever. This looks like a completely new design and a completely new body base for the Duke Thomas character, which is pretty cool um, because he is one of the younger characters, so he's a little bit slimmer, a little bit shorter than all the other uh, classic heroes. But, um, so it, he clearly looks like a teenager in action figure form, which is nice because uh, in, the, in, in previous figures for DC Universe Classics, sometimes they would just kind of shrink down the, the uh, particular body, uh, body, body mold and not necessarily kind of make him look... Uh, like a teenager because he was still super buff or super super tall or whatever but this one you could clearly tell he is a teenager just simply by um, the body mold and uh, it's completely new body mold for him only downside to that though is that um, I feel like uh, because this is a new body mold and they wanted to get uh, showcase the body mold as much as they can uh, they went too far and some of the articulation is a little bit limited and yes the articulation by Mattel is already pretty limited compared to, to most compared to others and they, they scaled it back a little bit more and um, other than that this is Duke Thomas in his first appearance uh, costume or his first superhero costume and that is his Robin costume during the We Are Robin storyline uh, I really like the Duke, Duke Thomas character but I really wish that they showed him more in his uh, new superhero costume, which is the all yellow outfit that he's wearing now, as seen in the DC Metal event. Um, he actually has his own superhero name now, and that is uh, the Signal. And he's actually going getting his new ongo uh, his own ongoing series later this year, I believe. But um, they gave him his first appearance outfit instead, which is still a really cool design costume. But um, just because I don't know when we'll be getting his costume proper uh, that he has now. Um, I'm trying to currently build the DC Bat family in their current outfits. So that would have been nice to have him in his current costume. But nonetheless, it's really cool to have the Duke Thomas character as an action figure. Anyway, uh, before we get to the action figure itself start, and we start talking about the articulation and all that stuff, let's talk about the design of the figure. We talked about the design of the figure. The paint job looks really, really well. All, a bunch of crisp lines. The colors look really nice. Um, everything uh, seems really crisp. Um, I like how, uh, for, his, his, for his sneakers, it... It just looks super clean the way they did it with just like the the white outline like that around over his like red sneakers. I know that's how it is in the out in the costume, but uh, they but by just simply doing that and like the knee pads having it a separate color, it just makes everything pop a little bit more. Uh, they did um, really good job with paint overall throughout his costume, like just simply even on his belt buckle. 
they have nice texture there and they actually did a really good job painting the gold for the buckle the little latches and little um, whatever it is on his utility belt they did a really good job painting that uh, nice texture on his armor and stuff everything looks really well designed um, Mattel did a really good job sh uh, sh with his uh, with his costume and stuff um, or even just uh, on the side of his helmet little, uh, the little Robin R's on the sides um, overall very cr crisp and clean lines they did a really good job painting um, this action figure um, before we get to articulation though, the sock accessories, the, uh, the accessories he comes with is uh, this unmasked head, which also very well, very well sculpted, and nice have, they have nice little details like for his hair and all that stuff, really well done, um, really cool, um, yeah, I can't think of the last time Mattel did an unmasked head. Did they do one for the Commissioner Gordon, or is that DC Collectibles? Nonetheless, this action figure comes with an unmasked head. A smoke grenade thing. And nunchucks. And the nunchucks they did a really good job on because it isn't cheaped out how some action figure companies do or some accessories do where they just paint it all one color and then call it a day. They actually did two tones, so they have the, the red matching his outfit. Then they have a nice uh, color here to, to hold the that connects the chain to the actual nunchucks as if it was a real nunchuck. Uh, they did texture and design on the chain itself that holds the nunchuck together. And then they just have little lines to show the detail for the nunchucks. So they did a really good job on this. Um, as far as getting it into his hand goes, oh shit, not the easiest process. Like there, I just his hand just completely came off. It's good, to, good to know that... Um, he can change hands. Um, thing though is because of his limited articulation, and we will be going over his articulation soon, um, because of his limited articulation and because, yeah, the nunchuck does look nice, but it, it doesn't have that much give because it is all made, made out of complete plastic. Very limited posing options you can do with him holding the nunchuck. Like, that's it, more or less. Like, I mean... You could do stuff like that, I guess. But I mean, who, who, who holds nunchucks like that? Like, you can't do like the one arm underneath thing like Bruce Lee or Michelangelo from Ninja Turtles. If you wanted a nunchuck pose, more or less, this is about what you can get because of the li limited articulation. So nunchucks are cool. There is one way you can hold his nunchucks. Um, but let's talk articulation. Articulation for this guy, a little bit less than DC Universe Classics traditionally have, I believe. Um, his head, let's go through his head. He can go side to side, but he can't, like, he can't go up or down. Mainly because of the design of the figure. Um, he has this collar popped and it is of a softer plastic but it does limit his movement and something that you don't want to push because it's in the way and it might break your your neck joint if you push it any further he can hold his hands up that high rotate his arm completely like that move his elbow articulation at the elbow none up here though just no swivel just articulation at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, because like we discovered earlier, his hands are interchangeable, but he doesn't come with alternating alternate hands, but they are removable. Um, he does have an ab crunch, so he can look down that much, lean back that much, rotate his waist as much as you desire, kick that far forward, Kick that far back. Do the Jean Claude Van Damme. Um, raise his knee that high. Articulation, articulation at the mid thigh. And after the knee, no articulation at all. 
nothing for the ankle, nothing for the toe, nothing. I mean, yeah, it's probably because they like the bulkiness of his his shoes or sneakers and boots thing, but nonetheless, no articulation below the knee, which is kind of a bummer. No pivots, no, no nothing. So that's it for articulation. Like I said, very limited. Um, overall, uh, I like this figure. Um, I like that it comes with a, a unmasked head. I like that he has nunchucks that are. Uh, Pretty cool, well-designed nunchucks, but unfortunately, because of his lack of articulation, not many options for posing him with nunchucks. Um, other than that, I wish he's 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 rocking his new uh, his new superhero costume that he's he's rocking nowadays as the signal, where he has his own superhero persona. But nonetheless, still a cool-looking figure. Um, yeah. That's it. That's pretty much all I have to say about this action figure. Uh, really well designed. Paint looks clean overall. Really cool. Uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I am on Instagram as Nerdy Scoundrels. Uh, please be sure to follow. Uh, also, like, comment, subscribe, and share. You know, all the basic things people say after YouTube videos, please do that. Uh, but yeah, please, please like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. I would greatly appreciate it. Until the next video, guys, see you later.